Welcome to episode 30 of the Credit Card BS Podcast. My name is Sean. I'm the UC Berkeley graduate that created and taught the university-sponsored course on credit card rewards. I'm here today with my co-host, Sherwin. Hi, everyone. I'm Sherwin. I'm a Stanford student who's really into the credit card travel, miles, points, hobby. Uh, I first got into this game about a year ago, and since then, I've amassed a ton of points and gone on a lot of cool trips. Here to share with you some of the things I've learned along the way. Today's episode is built trash so built or spelled b-i-l-t is this new credit card slash rewards ecosystem that we're going to delve into today um now to get us started sean why don't you tell us why built is so popular and the main kind of the main draw of it and then after that i can go into a little more detail about um the perks sounds good yeah so built the main appeal is that it's a way to earn credit card points while paying your rent and there's no fees for doing so. So normally for rent payments, you either have to pay by check, bank deposit, which has no fee, or you could choose to pay via a credit card, which has a percentage fee. Usually that percentage fee, in most cases, would offset the rewards you'd be earning, and you'd end up paying more to do it that way. Built is different in that you can actually pay rent without a fee and still earn credit card points, one point per dollar to be specific. And there's no annual fee on the card, and so that is the main appeal of the built card. And it's become very popular. A lot of YouTubers, a lot of bloggers, everyone talks about it. And it's a very, very hyped up card. So Sharon, why don't you talk more specifically about the perks though? Yes. So how it works is you can use it to pay your rent. And yeah, as Chan said, normally there's a fee associated with it. But how it works is they'll actually Bill will actually just like cut a check directly to your landlord or give you an ACH number that you can use through like your apartment's portal. So you know, on the landlord or apartment side, it, it just seems like a regular check or bank transfer. But you are at, on our side, it's actually processed kind of like a credit card transaction that you earn points on. So uh, the built MasterCard is a no annual fee card. I think the best way to describe it is that it offers Chase Sapphire Preferred like perks, but without the $95 annual fee. Um, similar to the Sapphire Preferred, it earns 1x points on everything, 2x points on travel, and 3x points on dining. And these are all transferable points, which is really exciting. We're, we'll get to that in a second. Um, now, there is a catch. You have to have five transactions per month, um, or otherwise you'll forfeit the points for that month. So you know, make sure you're doing it. Uh, you, know, you can do the Amazon reloads, um, if, or you can just make sure you're using it at least five times a month. Um, they also have these rent day promos so where on the first of each month, uh, from 12 a.m. Eastern Time to 11:59 Pacific Time, I believe. Um, you, know, you know, any purchase you make during that will earn twice as many points. That'll become 2x everything, 4x travel, 6x dining. Really cool perk. Um, I would say a huge draw of this card, this ecosystem, is that the transfer partners are gold. Uh, you know, they have a world of Hyatt, which only Chase has in addition to built. Uh, they even have American Airlines. I think they're the only you know credit card program that transfers to American Airlines. Even Citibank, which issues the American Airlines co-branded cards, uh, doesn't have American Airlines as a transfer partner of their thank you points, which is kind of insane. But uh, apparently Built was able to do that. Um, they have Aeroplan, they have Virgin Atlantic, Turkish Airlines, which is really good for sh you know short haul United Economy, sweet spot there. Talked about it before. Uh, Avios, British Airways, Cathay Pacific, Flying Blue, United. So I don't know, Sean, what do you think? I actually think these are like some of the most valuable partners and may be like a better and more well-rounded set than like what Chase or American Express has. 100% agree. I think the Built has the best transfer partners of any credit card network, period. Uh, even Amex, who has a ton of airline partners, I still think Built would arguably beat them on the airline front as well because you have Turkish, which American Express doesn't have. And you also have AA, which AA miles, my God, are they valuable. So, and then you have Hyatt as well. Like Hyatt and AA, like that's all, that's honestly, if someone just said I had a card with only Hyatt and only AA as my transfer options, I would be happy. I would be more than happy with that, yeah. that, that card. But they have all these other ones as well. And what makes this even better, okay, even better is that built often on rent day on their first of the month the same day that the the bonuses are doubled on your spending they will have massive transfer bonuses to a specific partner so a couple examples of this is recently we have seen a transfer bonus to virgin atlantic where the 
Now, Built has a status tier system, so like the more you spend on the card, the higher status you have. But even at the base tier of status was a 75% transfer bonus, which is bonkers. That doesn't happen anywhere else. And then if you were the top status, it was 150% bonus, meaning that one built point was 2.5 virgin points. So that is insane to me that they they have these transfer bonuses. We've also seen, I think, 100% we've seen to flying blue. And then they had a similar to the Virgin Atlantic structure to Emirates. So yeah. these bonuses are super, super valuable and have left me wanting more built points because, you know, even if I can't earn as many of them with these transfer bonuses, it effectively is like I'm earning more than I actually am. Right. I Yeah. It's just crazy to me that this is a card without an annual fee that lets you earn 3x points on dining for Hyatt and American Airlines. Like, that's even better than their co-branded cards frankly um also what's really cool i think is as i said they have chase sapphire preferred like perks without the annual fee this includes things like trip cancellation trip delay primary auto cdw no foreign transaction fee you know bonus points for lift cell protection cell phone protection purchase protection so things that normally are associated with cards for an annual fee uh you know they've basically are able to give it without an annual fee and it's very much stylized like a travel card um, so I, I think this is pretty competitive in that sense. Uh, I also want to add that you can have a built account without the built card. So even if um, you don't have to build MasterCard, you can still earn built points and you still have access to the transfer partners. It'll just be harder to earn a lot of them because you won't be able to pay rent or spend. But they have little things like, you know, for example, if you link your Lyft account with built, you'll earn two points per dollar just with that link, even without any of the credit card stuff. Um, so I've been taking advantage of that. Um, in fact, I get 5x points on my Chase card from Lyft plus 2x uh, bill points just by linking it. And then so effectively I'm earning 7x Hyatt points because they both transferred to Hyatt through Lyft, which is really great. Um, they also have these like trivia games on the first of each month uh, as part of their rent day promos where you can earn points for uh, answering trivia questions, which is it's not a lot of points, but it's a little something. Yeah, it definitely is. And I, I, I play that the, the trivia game too. It's a little bit of points. And so we've talked a lot about this card so far and, you know, we've really been praising it. We've been saying all the benefits. It's got amazing transfer partners. It's got amazing transfer bonuses. You can earn points on rent. It's no annual fee. You have other travel protections. So why is this episode titled is built trash? So yes. what are the cons of the built card? So yeah, one I'm, of the uh, biggest ones, Oh, sorry, what were you saying? Yeah, I was just going to say, I'm going to come out right here and make a very bold claim at this moment that despite all of great things I've said about built, I think is not the optimal strategy. In fact, possibly a bad idea in terms of value you're getting to pay rent with the built MasterCard. Um, and I'm going to explain why. So I think as Sean was about to get to, um, the built card does not have an official sign-up bonus. Um, Sean, do you want to talk a little bit? Yeah, about so that? yeah, there may there's an unofficial sign-up bonus, kind of. You may get targeted... Uh, when you get the card, that when you activate it, you may have 5x points earning for five days after you get the card, up to $10,000 in spending. So basically, you know, since you normally earn 1x on that, this is a potentially a max of a 40,000 point bonus, which is not that good, especially if you have to spend 10k to get it. That's not a very competitive offer. So that's already a huge knock against the card. Because a lot you of you might not even get that cards. bonus, so you should. And you just might assume, not even get it. Yeah, you should just assume there's no sign up bonus when you sign up. For and it. even if you get it, like I didn't reach the whole, I didn't spend 10k on the card. Like I'm, that's not a good bonus for spending 10k In within five days. five days. That's absurd. You could get if you get an Amex Business Gold and add two authorized users on the like 20k offer. There's a there's a link where you can add authorized users, get 20k on the card, spend 4k on it. And those count also to the general sign-up bonus. You could be earning like 200,000 points or 190, I guess, 1,000 points as the bonus for an Amex Biz Gold and spend 10K in three months. Versus or even on the Chase on the side, bill. you know, if you like high up on the Chase side, an ink card, you know, it gives you three months to like $6,000 for like anywhere from 75 to 90,000 points. So you could do that as well as like, I don't know, another card with a 4,000 minimum spend so and get like way more points. This is not a competitive sign-up bonus is what Sean and I are trying to say. Yeah, so that's a, that's a huge knock against it. And then I think, you know, I'll have you talk about this here, but 
another thing is, you know, everyone talks about paying rent on the bill card. Ooh, I'm going to pay rent on the bill card, pay rent on the bill card. There's two problems, okay? I'll, I'll, I'll talk about the first one. I'll let you cover the second one. The, the big issue for me is that I, I don't know what your rent is, okay? My rent isn't 10000 a month. My rent isn't massive, massive. In, I mean, rent's expensive, but it's not, you know, I can't imagine many people are having $10,000 a month rent payments or something because you're, people are overestimating the amount that they are going to be earning from this card. If your rent is $2,000 a month, okay, that's 24,000 points a year. That's something, that's something, but that's not, that's not game breaking amount of points here. Okay. That's pretty mediocre in my mind. So now there's another big issue. Uh, sure. And you should talk about this one. Yes. It's just the opportunity cost issue. So, I mean, as Sean said, 24,000 points, you know, sounds like pretty good. Yeah. I otherwise wouldn't get anything for rent. But it really pales in comparison with some of the sign-up bonuses you can get from competitors. Um, you may very much uh, be better off paying rent with other cards through things like plastic or through your apartment's um, portal, even if you're incurring a fee uh, to hit other sign-up bonuses. You will actually end up way ahead even with the fee. I'll just use plastic as an example. Uh, plastic spelled P-L-A-S-T-I-Q is a service that pretty much lets you use any credit card to pay for certain expenses and they will cut a check to the recipient such as your landlord or your apartment. Now, you do have to bear the cost of the fee on like built, which kind of sucks, right? So it's a 2.9% fee plus $1.49 per check. So that sounds like a huge fee and probably not worth it for most credit card rewards. And I would agree if you're just earning the one X or two X back to pull a credit card, you're not going to come out ahead with that fee. But there is a very strong case to be made that if paying rent through plastic or, you know, paying other bank expenses through plastic uh, allows you to achieve the minimum spend requirement for some of these huge sign up bonuses, it is very, very, very worth it. If I can pay two months of, let's say my rent is $3,000, right? And let's say I pay two months of it through built, I'm going to get 6,000 points. Okay. What if I pay the 3000 for month one, 3000 for month two through plastic and I sign up for like an ink, ink cart, ink unlimited, ink cash, you know, I could have earned 90,000 points um, just from the bonus alone, even though, yeah, I will have to pay, you know, a couple more, uh, maybe a hundred or so more dollars of fees, but I'm earning 90,000 points as opposed to 6,000 points. I think the difference is astronomical once you think about how valuable other sign up bonuses are. Um, so yeah, just think about how, how long would it take for you to even like break even with one X points on built versus like an ink bonus, for example, you'd have to spend basic $90,000 on rent to break even how many years of rent is that? So that, that is kind of, uh, my general point. Sean, what do you think about this take? Oh, I think, I think it's a completely valid take. I think it's, it's a very good point, especially the break even, right? When you're getting this built card and putting rent on it if you're missing out because it does take up a 524 slot if you're missing out on an ink card because of that that ink card that mm. bonus on that card is mm. so huge that it would just take so long to make up the difference and so i think that's what a lot of people we, we've talked about this uh, i forget the episode number but i think it was like is cashback trash uh it was the episode title and people get caught on the multiplier mindset where they i need to get a card that has this multiplier this multiplier so i can cover all categories you don't really what matters more is how many points are you actually earning with that. So don't overestimate the number of points you'd be earning on the built card. Now, if you do have a lot of a big rent expense, or if your rent is high, it, it could still make sense. I do have the built card. And this is one thing I do think could make a lot of sense is that Wells Fargo, in my experience, has been fairly generous on high velocity approvals. So I got the built card when I was past 524. I got the choice card when I was well past 524 and i was able to get both of those now as long as you don't have super high velocity in the past let's say three months if your 524 score is very high does seem possible to get this card it does seem possible to get wells fargo cards so i think that could be a good angle there um and so for me i, I still do like this card i want to be clear because with the amazing transfer partners and with the amazing transfer bonuses I think it is a card that if you are above 524 or if you have velocity to spare, that it could totally make sense because of just the ability to transfer those points out 
to the very valuable partners at increased rates. I think just my advice is to be more logical and mathematical about how many points you will actually be earning from this card and don't just get it for the sake of earning points on your rent without a fee. Really think about it. Is it going to make more sense to you than an alternative card? Yes, that's a very good point, right? Built will take up a 524 slot. If you're way over 524 or you know, you're over 524, you don't care about bringing it down. You know, yeah, sure. Why not? Go for it. It can't hurt that much. But if you're under 524 or you're trying to get under 524, you know, as Sean said, don't overestimate how many points you'd be able to earn from this card. I, I do want to add an important caveat. I will say what I'm saying may not apply to everyone. Uh, for many people, built may still make sense if you want to have like a set it and forget it mindset. Like I'm just, you know, Instead of paying rent out of my checking account, I'm just going to pay it out of built and earn 1x points and not really need to sign up for a bunch of cars every month and then process these plastic payments and trying to hit these bonuses, whatever. Okay, sure. You know, if you're not someone who likes opening up a bunch of cars anyway, you know, this might be an easy set it and forget it approach. You're getting points on something that you previously did not get points on. Um, may still make sense. And by all means, that might be a good reason to get this card. So my kind of take was more geared toward people like me, the optimizers that would rather focus on the sign-up bonuses, focus on getting as many points as possible from my spend. So that's kind of the angle at which I'm, I'm coming here. But I can totally see this make sense for many people who do not spend as much time and energy as Sean and I do on optimizing our, our credit card setups. And they just want to get points on something they previously did not get points on. I, I agree completely. I think... It is a card that I would, I'm going to say it is not trash. I am going to say it is a, it is, however, a card that people, I think too many people are getting without really thinking about, but I do think it is a valuable card. I think it is a powerful card. I just think people need to be more realistic about it. Is there yes, anything I mean, else? Frankly, that you to if, yeah, I mean, I think frankly, if they just added a decent sign up bonus onto this card, I would recommend it without reservation. I'd honestly even be willing to take a, a sort of small annual fee on this card if they had a really good bonus, my opinion. Uh, Sean, would you agree? 100%. I think the biggest weakness for me is that, you know, the transfer partners are so good. The transfer bonuses are so good. But I have no points on the card because there's no bonus. And the, this is the only card in that points earning ecosystem. So it's very difficult to build up a significant balance of belt points. So unless you have high spend that you could do on rent day, unless you have a, a lot of referrals you'd be getting, and the referral bonus really isn't good on the card anyways. Uh, I still do think it's have, worth spending like dining on this card, like 3X. Dining can make sense. It's very 3X. good. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, that being said, I, I will end this episode by saying like, I do think Built is a game-changing product and it is something I'm very excited about. I almost think they're exploring a new space in you know the credit card world that was previously in tap you know it's filling a gap like um rent spend which is you know pretty significant for many people sort of also marketing a new demographic uh with the app design the fact that's the shiny heavy black metal car and i kind of see the angle they're trying to play here um uh, and i remember something very interesting uh, i forgot where i read this i think they were asked well, how are you able to get high as a partner you know when you know they were previously basically exclusive with Chase. All the other banks are not able to get them. And I think Hyatt's angle on this, maybe it was from one of their spokespersons or something, it's it's not just they're selling points. They're kind of trying to um, market to a new like Gen Z slash millennial audience that they feel like they can reach through built that uh, they would not otherwise be able to do so. And that's kind of why they're sort of agreeing to do this partnership with built. Uh, you know, it's kind of spectacular how such a good transfer partner would be available on such a new product. Uh, and I think that's the angle you're trying to go for. And that's why they're able to get these partnerships, all these airlines, because the airlines also see the value of their kind of new marketing strategy. So that's kind of my understanding of it. It's also creating this whole new ecosystem. My understanding is um, you're trying to partner with like landlords, apartment complexes to just use built directly and take it as a payment method, which I think, you know, could work in long term. I don't know too much about that. I'm more focused on the points earning sign. It, it, it could be like a, a thing through which they become profitable. And yeah, overall, you know, it's still an amazing car with great transfer partners at no annual fee. I would definitely consider this card for dining 
yeah, even if I'm not paying any rent through it. Yeah, I pretty much agree with all your takes there. So in summary, Built Card is not trash, but it is more situational than everyone should get it. So did you have anything else that you wanted to talk about or should we close out for today? Let's close out. Awesome. So if you enjoyed today's episode and you want to help us out a lot, the easiest way to do it is to give us a like and subscribe to the channel. We are rapidly growing and your support helps out immensely. Additionally, if you want to learn about award travel and connect with a group of people that have a similar interest, check out the 100% free traveling discord group at the link in the description. We'll drop amazing deal alerts, price errors, award space, o- space opening up and all the like and 100% for free, you will learn a ton. And if you want to support us directly, the best way to do that is whenever you're applying for any credit card, just use our affiliate links also at the link in the description. It helps out so much. It doesn't cost you anything and it really does make a huge difference. So thank you so much for watching and we will see you next week. Thank you. Goodbye.